Hi everyone. <laughs> Uh, I'll wait till they're coming. Okay, more. Yeah. Alrighty. So, I'm doing this presentation on the Fedora magazine. Um, I think most people in the community at this point have probably heard of it. If not, you're either a new contributor or living under a rock. Uh, I'm still waiting for my subscription to show up. <laughs> so a little bit about me, just a quick introduction. So I've been with Fedora since about mid uh, F18. Um, I started with actually the docs team. Started doing some stuff there. Come to find out that I enjoy a little bit more marketing and a little bit more technical. So I kind of was trying to find my place. And so after going through and talking to a few people, the marketing team was the best choice. So I went up and joined with them. Um, here's my contact info, in case anything ever blows up with the Fedora magazine or anything like that. Um, so what I kind of do is, the Fedora magazine, we kind of split up between two different groups. So we have contributors who write articles, and I kind of do the more technical standpoint to make sure that it stays alive and running. As you probably noticed, everything Fedora now, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Google+, comes back to the site. So this site cannot go down. So it's been, I pretty much do the back end, so I kind of stay behind the scenes. I'll do an article every so often, but mostly just stay behind the scenes and help out with other marketing related tool tasks as well. So what we're gonna cover today is actually what is the Fedora magazine? what it looked like when we first started up to now, how we do updates and enhancements so we can add more things like translations, so forth, and then how can you contribute, which is the big question. So the F Fedora Magazine, does anybody remember the Fedora Weekly News? All right, this is what the Fedora Magazine is now. It is officially the Fedora Weekly News. So everything that come is official for Fedora comes to this site. We have the blog or the planet, which is more user friendly or more personable for like a blog type item, but this is anything official with Fedora. And it actually runs WordPress. So most people here I think have played with WordPress at all. So we've taken a basic WordPress site and made it awesome. Thank you to Ryan. So some of the items that are on the Fedora magazine, we have general announcements, news. So you guys have seen when we launched Fedora Alpha, or the Alpha phase, Beta, and our GA. Uh, development announcements, so if we're going to launch, say, you know, uh, if the development team comes out, they're gonna do test days, anything like that, they report on that as well. Uh, event reports, flock, any type of event, FUDCONs, Asia, any geo, will report back. Uh, that's supposed to be one of the things the ambassadors do, is they submit a, an event report, and then they can either write an article or hand it off to somebody who will help do that. And then we have Matthew Miller, who is a big contributor to the Fedora magazine. He writes a five, weeks in, or five things in Fedora every week. I think it's every Monday. And so it's basically a summary of what's happening in Fedora this week. And so that's our main big post every week. And then anything else that anybody wants to really write about related to Fedora in general, that's not kind of like a personal story. So that's what the Fedora plan is for. So I know a lot of people in here are technical and they want to hear the tech side of it too. So I'm going to cover both how to contribute and we'll just lay out how it's actually laid out. Because most people have kind of heard that we're no longer on OpenShift. So I want to just highlight how this, how this site keeps up with all the traffic that we have. So we have WordPress right now running on a normal LAMP stack on RHEL 6. So we're using Apache, PHP, MySQL. It's a virtual machine. It runs on a hosted machine. It runs on eight gigs. So what this is good for is the site right now runs usually around four. We use eight for when we launch when we launch a new version of Fedora, or when we see any type of traffic coming in, so we can scale up. And then as we see the traffic come down, we'll scale down. 
So right now we're running at about, I think, six because the site's getting hammered because of flock. So, but that's nice because it allows us to scale up and down based on what we need. And we use Puppet and Catello to manage the site. So the site right now is pretty much automated. So both of these projects are upstream. So we try to keep up with the open source as well. So uh, Puppet manages the configuration management of the site. And then uh, Catello actually manages the patching management. So we have a staging site where you can play around with, test new uh, plugins and so forth. And so what we do is we, when we do patching, we patch the staging site first, make sure that any new kernels come in, um, any new packages will survive that first, and then if that survives, we'll push it into the production box. That we're not that way we're not just doing yum update dash y and blowing up the box. <laughs> so, Catello and Puppet help out with that a lot. So this is the site. So when I first came into Fedora Marketing, Roos was like. We've got this magazine site, and we really want to do something with it. And I was like, all right. So it was me and another guy, I think Zacharias, or Mitzi and IRC. So we were like, all right, what can we do with this? And so this is what it looked like. <laughs> Not anything like it is today. And so we were kind of like, how do we make this popular for Fedora? So with consistent talk with Ryan, in the design team, we improved it a little bit, and then we even made it more, and then now we have it today where it is completely revamped, and this is by far, um, when we changed the theme over, uh, Matthew Miller tweeted about it, and it is by far the best thing that we've, that we've heard back from on the theme. Um, even other distributions who on Twitter have even commented on it. Um, oh my God, Ubuntu even praised how the theme looks. So this is our driving site for anything Fedora related. And so I actually, when I was going through the slides, this was from 2014. I was actually just going to delete these. But I was like, you know what, it'd really be kind of cool to show in retrospect from last year how much traffic we've gotten since we've changed over and made Fedora Magazine official for any documentation. So, so June, we hit 60,000 views, which really in a place, okay, some of that's robots hitting it, some of that's just, but for us back then, that was really huge. So we were getting 2,000 page views a day. So now I want to put that in perspective with today. So now, this is anybody who has access to the site, which is anybody who signs up, you don't have to be an admin or anything, can see this. So right now, I took this picture today. So, so far today, we've hit 4,000 views. Our best ever was 31,000, and at one point we had, um, yeah, almost a million, seven hundred thousand. And so far right now, May, we've had over uh, 120,000 views. So our traffic, as you can see, has almost quadrupled since we've... Put in perspective, opensource.com averages about 500 to 600,000 bits a month. So that's size. Yeah, and, and one of the things too, and Robert mentioned this in his talk, is we made a widget now with start.fedora.project.org, which will pull in the articles from the Fedora magazine. So that has increased traffic, uh, and traffic just from anywhere in general. It's ever since we've changed the theme around and started putting things to Fedora, uh, or putting everything on Fedora magazine, has really helped. And so it really hurt us. So about, about a year and a half ago, the site crashed around December. And we started tweeting and posting things to Fedora Magazine, not as much as we do now. But the site died. Um, the people who were helping me with it, we kind of just, it just kind of died for a while. And so we really, we brought back Fedora Magazine back up. I built it back up from the ground up on OpenShift. 
And so, but everybody was kind of afraid to post stuff because as anybody's seen, we would have, people would go to it and then we'd have outages and so forth. And so, um, something just, you know, not too recently ago, we tweeted about something and then we went to the site and the site wasn't there because it was, it crashed on, work, on OpenShift. So people on Facebook and Twitter are like, where's the post? And then I think one time I had to message Yuri and say, hey, can you take this down because the post doesn't exist anymore. When I brought it back up, it's not there. So a lot of issues, but now that we're stable and we have the traffic coming to it and we're tweeting about it as official, that we've really brought the Fedora magazine back to life. Whereas before it was like a, a project that you kind of, uh, okay. But now it's, but yeah, traffic is amazing on it right now. Hey Chris, maybe you're gonna get to this, I'm curious, you mentioned the factor being the redesign. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, how much of the traffic goes straight to the front page versus how much of the traffic comes in via social media versus how much comes in by search because the redesign really wouldn't be responsible for things coming from say Twitter or you know Google because that's organic traffic that's coming from people finding the stuff from outside of the world. Right, right. So well, the next slide covers that and what it, a lot of it is is we do have a Reddit. A lot of it's coming from Reddit, a lot is coming from start at Fedora. Um, let me actually go to that page. It's kind of right here but I can let me I took the next one. Um, actually, no, it's right. So we can actually see where the traffic's coming from. I can get to this slide a little bit later. But it'll actually show us, like, this one's start.fedora. Here's all of our search engines, our Reddit, our Twitter. Um, I can't read what those two are, but Facebook, Google+. Plus. So the majority of its first social media site that gets the most is Twitter. Um, and then, then Facebook, and then Google+. Plus. I've got, I've got all the time statistics, and we have by far the, the biggest sources. So the typing page. Yep. It's like two two hundred fifty thousand hits. And then Google Plus the second is Google Plus, forty okay. thousand, and then ninety eight and then Twitter. Facebook is actually pretty small, like only twenty thousand. Okay. Those mm -hmm. are tech three figures and uh correct holding. They will do the search terms too. So like down here a little bit more. So actually show us which pages they're actually clicking on. So sometimes even if they go to the start or they just go to the main page, they'll actually have to click on something. So that's what this site, this plugin will do, is actually tell us which sites. So example, uh, Noki today, I published an article for him yesterday, and he asked me, where's my page at? How, how many views do I have? And I actually told him, yours actually had over a thousand views already. So we can see which actually, where they're clicking, the search terms that they're using, and so forth. And one thing that's, oh. uh, I just wanted to make the argument that because the design is so nice and really professional looking, that's the same for us on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know if they're from us or from other people on Twitter who are like, oh, this article looks great, and like forwarding it. It's, I, I do think that that has a role because people from other distros now prefer to work with the core magazine, whereas that was not the case with the user. I hope that I'm kind of like the article rather than the design of the site is actually why people but if the design is as bad as it was, and I can say this having been involved in a bad one, I, I don't want to insult the name but myself, um, it it really would make someone it's, I it's think. It's the right mix of both of them. But, but, yeah, but, but it, we it, still it, all read LWN, right? It's, <laughs> it's information. <laughs> yes. I'm just information and the package. But what, what part of the design and whatever helps in social media is the are the banners we have because if you, for example, post uh, about the article about Firefox, then you've got a nice banner with uh, Firefox logo, and it always stands out from the feed. One of the things too is the, is definitely the design. I, I really think if you look at when we went to this and we were on no, not we're not going to go to that one. We were on this one. And I started trying to tell people about Fedora Magazine. Nobody really could take it seriously because they just like, oh, it's just a WordPress blog. So why, what, what's, what's really going to be different about that compared to the planet, Fedora Planet? So then when we went to this one, it, it looked a lot better, but people were still kind of not really taken seriously. And I think as soon as, like, it, that right there, I mean, as soon as we made the switch to this, I, I, everybody 
who didn't take Fedora Magazine seriously, it just it changed their perspective on it. Uh, I, I mean, definitely, I, I, I think we're, we've got better, co we, it's a combination of multiple things. We've got a better design, we've got better content that's going to it, and we also have, I also noticed when going to the site, there's every so often where Fedora will make an announcement and it doesn't get an article on Fedora Magazine. And something, a site like ZDNet or somebody will share some, an older article on Fedora Magazine and we'll get a ton of traffic from that. So that's what we see a lot of as well. So some of the older magazines or older, older articles will get shared for some reason and it will just generate a whole bunch of traffic as well. But one of the things definitely, it's, it's the design that's definitely changed. Ever since we changed the design and the start dot Fedora, we've had nothing but increased traffic, which is good, and quality articles. I can say from when we were on the older design, some of the articles were not quality, so they were more content based. How can we get more stuff onto the site? And we've kind of changed that approach now to more quality articles, mm -hmm. and so it's starting to get. Because I remember when, we, when I first started doing stuff with Fedora magazine, it was like. We need more stuff, and someone would come in and say, "Well, we posted our, our meat pot minutes. Is that good?" Is right, that right. Good? No, it's really, I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe that, that's not quite helpful. Yeah, meeting notes and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, or people would just upload a video and just not comment about it or anything. Just upload a video, and that would go up there. So yeah, definitely more quality content is up there now. Uh, one thing, you know. Uh, Paul, you found a plugin for search engine optimization. So one thing a post has to go through now is when you write a post, you need to make sure that always the featured image is very good. We don't want something like before we used to have just a Fedora logo. Now we have it tailored to every little well, that one does. But that's my fault. But <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that one out. And really <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but most of them, as you can see, are definitely, well, Matthew Miller's got his signature one, but every article that's different has a very good featured image. So right off the bat, we're looking at that and saying, okay, we've got something that's very beautiful. So that, and also right now too, is you can actually comment. So you can actually see that these have comments on them. So they're almost, the posts are almost interactive at this point now. Whereas before, you'd have to click on the post, see if anybody commented. It wouldn't send an update to you if you did get an update, so a lot of people would comment. Do, you, do the visit metrics that the logs are looking at show that people are spending more time on the site now, or more more clicks where the refer is to the magazine itself? Have anything tracking the time of the session? I think it does actually track it. Yeah, I can pull up the you can pull it up and look just to yeah. see it. But yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, overall, definitely much better. And I think definitely, ha you know, most of it is a lot of design, but it's also how we've taken the, the approach to articles, not just posting, I, I hate to say the word, but garbage up to the site to get people to look at it. So now we've, we've maintained an image with it. So yeah, we're averaging about 3,700 page views a day. Um, this today, I actually, when I took that picture, we we're at 3,700, and when I was in the last talk, we we're up to over almost about 4,400 just today. So we're definitely. So this is, I think, the article everybody was looking at, or hopefully everybody can see it. But we've got the search engine terms, the clicks of where they're actually clicking at, and then we've got the top posts and pages. And then if you actually expand these out, you can actually see what the search, where they're actually coming from. And so forth. So it does get pretty detailed, especially for a free plugin, which is really nice. So the future of it. So definitely, I think we're already kind of there with quality content. Uh, but I kind of want to see what, for most of you guys, what you think would kind of even help it more. I mean, we definitely we hit the nail on the head with the theme change, and we definitely are getting more quality content. But one thing I am seeing too, though, is we're not getting, it's from the same people. So it'd be nice to, get, I wanna see more contributors come to the site. So one thing that I've done is a lot of people, and this has been brought up, is there's a roadblock for every, every group to join. 
So at first we want, and I'll cover this later, but I wanted to say it ahead of time is, you had to join a mailing list, hop an IRC, what do I write about? Then I have to get an account on the magazine. I've made it now, so anybody can sign up and write an article. It will give you, it won't give you admin access, it'll give you the permissions to write an article, and you can't publish it. So what I've done is I've tried to make it as easy as possible by taking out any roadblocks, and you just log in with your FAST account, so you don't even need to make a username or password. So we've eliminated any roadblocks I can possibly think of to not to, to getting an article in the magazine. But I wanted to kind of see what you guys thought of what would make it better to get more contributors. Names. So like opensource.com would do like women in tech community or like you know student suite or something like that. If you had names, then it would be maybe a little bit easier to get outside contributors because they're experts in that community rather than experts in that. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I have two ideas. Um, on the old pages, you had always, um, I mean, not on the Fedora magazine page, on the Fedora project page. We had always a category that was shown where Fedora is presenting on an event. It was always sucking because it was never accurate. Can we have two weekly or something like that and particular in Fedora? and put it in the next upcoming events and what we will present there and what will happen there. And that could come directly off the events calendar mm -hmm. the, the ambassadors have. And really, that could be like a five minute job that or something. That thing is never updated, but it's not here. No, 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 they, they do keep, there There are, in fact, I just checked it just uh, about four weeks ago and it was really up to date for the next six months. Yeah. So, I mean, there may not be quite as many events happening in this room, but it was definitely being updated. So, but that's something we can actually ask the fan, you know, or what they call it, Fosco. Yeah, when, well, it's still. I think we get something. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that's a great idea. I think and having and even just a little yeah. sidebar that says, what can you find for it? So Question How many people in here have written for the magazine in recent months? Huh. Yeah. How many of you were motivated by, like, badges or? Well, the, the reason that where I'm going with that is where, where I'm going with that is would it do you think we would get more contributions if when someone wrote for Fedora magazine we sent them a t-shirt or something with the badge that was sort of exclusive so you actually have to write for the magazine to get that as opposed to well, yeah, eight make, people to write. Make, make it say five times you write five articles. Um, I, if somebody writes a decent article, I'd be perfectly happy to be screwing budget for, for just one. Yeah. Yeah, how many times you get away with getting an article from the fans? <laughs> and, and by the way, like I feel very conflicted about encouraging people to write for free ball. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so if I can make yeah. a, a, a suggestion for, and, and this is not to say that this is so just good, but the, the thing underlying the well, thing that we need to get right. Yes. Oh, you want to set ready? I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Um, Bingo is doing uh, a web page with the most uh, statistic that she has always posted in the planner called This New Infidor. When you really uh, put out statistics, he wants from the design team more polished pages. But I think, he, uh, as I thought a little bit about it, is it not better to bring this into the uh, uh, magazine and make his pages more to give it more more statistic view and push this you know as, as pushing this statistic always to the planet. How would you SEO optimize statistics? Um, do you have everything to SEO optimize? I mean if somebody is interested in that, I think it's better on the magazine as on the planet. So I think that um, magazine is really more for readers, and I think for contributors, who are just going to talk to you now, I wasn't in the session, but Ryan just going to be having like a blog for the council yeah. that's more for contributors, so maybe having a push to the council blog, since the council manages to go anyway and talk about yeah. 
just means something. Yeah, but the, that task list is actually predates Fedora Magazine, I think. I mean, yeah. They change the release number every time, but I don't think the task can change. Like, they five, change if you ask them. Ask them what you change. Yeah. So it's so more Usually it takes two or three releases to figure out what it is not really new for the goal. I mean, there's, there's a bunch, but I should, maybe we've only got some getting so I would like to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just wanted to add, this is minor and silly, but if we really want more people to just do the magazine, they should go back to the bottom of the page. It says how I like to do the magazine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you've got to go through like five or eight pages to find the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see a login from you at all. Okay. Well, I, I have a not. I think a few can log in itself. Yeah, I, I agree with him because I had a bad experience about a year ago that I was trying to push an article for the food camp at Nicaragua and it, it, it got stuck because I didn't really know how to follow well, and, and the other thing, I didn't have the time because right. I was ruining the, the, so we the, the, I know that that was a year ago yeah, and yeah. you made a lot of change but uh, I agree with that, to, to have a kind of a central yeah, we, I mean, instruction how to do Yeah, I mean, we can add easily add the links back um, to the login, um, just because I haven't really seen any emails, like the marketing email thread or mailing list is kind of... It doesn't need to be a login, like, it should be like a link in the third. To so how to sign up, yeah. How to contribute to the magazine, and that can go directly to the first review page, which describes how to find the login, yeah. Yeah. or it could be the page that says, this is candidate material for magazine versus and it's definitely a good idea. We have pages actually. Ryan has actually put, put together a page, a page for how to write an article for the magazine. And, uh, and, there's, and there's another page which is what, what to do if you just have an idea. Like you don't want to write, but you have an idea for something you want to see. And, so it, yes, it and, and yeah, I, I, and that's from a perception standpoint. I just, I only seen like maybe one or, one or two emails across the mailing list saying I have trouble logging in. We used to. Before we incorporated FAFS, you would have your own username and password, and that brought up a lot of risk with the security team. They didn't like that being housed on the set of the server. We also had a lot of people like, I signed up with, do I sign up with my FAFS? Do I sign up with this? Then we had to reset passwords. So we just went over to the, letting FAFS handle it, and that ever since then, it's all that's tapered off. So yeah, I, I mean, we can definitely add those back. Um, so I just didn't think from a perception standpoint from not seeing any emails that everything was was good with it. So that brings us into our next thing. So how do we update and make enhancements? So you guys have seen all the theme changes, the search engine plugin that Paul found. We have some translate plugins. So how did we use to test it? And this is also brings into why it went down so much before. So we used to mm -hmm. test it just if we would install a plugin. And this plugin could be from somebody that's tested it one that met our needs and nobody really, it wasn't ever updated. Put it in, hey you guys, can you try this? And then I'll email it to the mailing list. Oh, it works, all right, cool. Off it goes. Not the best way to do it. I think anybody in here, any technical person here, know that you never should push anything into production without testing it first. So, so that's the old way. Um, I tested it and okay, it works, good to go. And then I'd get an email from JZB or, or Ruth or somebody. Oh, the site's down. Oh, okay. There you go. Figure out what, what I did wrong there. Come to find out that author never updated the plugin in like a year. But it worked at that time. So the new way. So we have a staging instance that mirrors the Fedora magazine. It may not be up right now because I was having some I was having direct change from DNS stuff on it. But it mirrors the Fedora magazine. Anybody can log in, it goes to your FAS. Feel free to blow up the site. You can test plugins there, you can test themes, you can test anything you want. And the goal of this is because, as again, we're a community, so I can't figure out all the things that we need. Like Paul found the awesome search plugin. I know, uh, I, I forget the name of the person, but he found a, a really good translate plugin. So a lot of the plugins are found by people and we welcome ideas. We want to make the site better. We want plugins that are really good, that are not going to bog down the site. But we also don't want 
a thousand plugins floated into the site as well. So, but one thing that we want is, as a community, we want to make our site better. And rather than having to go through all this red tape, we've set up a staging site where you guys can test things. It's snapshotted, so if it blows up, it's no big deal. Um, the, the specs are pretty much similar. And so what we've done is if it lasts, the plugin lasts for two weeks without really causing any issues, we'll go ahead and push it. So if there's something that you guys need immediately, you can always email us, Paul, me, JCB, any of the admins on the site, and we can put it into. But this is the way that we wanted to do things and make it more community. So it's not like everybody doesn't think it's locked down or anything. So you had a question? No. So how can I contribute? So this is the big thing. So the number one thing is, is I don't know what to write about. How do I join? What do I do? How do I actually get an account and so forth? So again, we've, uh, we've all heard about this all flock. We have a mailing list. The marketing mailing list is the main mailing list for anything. We used to have a magazine one, but we figured that it'd be better and seen by more people if it was on the marketing mailing list. And that way we can also too, if somebody says, hey, I need help, there's more chance to get a response and also spawn off different ideas. Like, oh, this person wrote about this. Now I have an idea to write something about this and that could be put into marketing as well. So we've condensed it to one. So again, if you don't have an account, a fast account, you do need one um, to, to see you can contribute. But it's, you know, just to actually say hi on the mailing list and so forth or even toss about an idea, not needed. Just send an email to the mailing list and the third thing I actually took off, I should have taken off, but this was our number one blocker. How do I sign up for an account? I signed up for an account. It needs to be approved by somebody. I'm only a subscriber. Can you bump me up so I can write an article? And again, thank you to the WordPress for their, uh, them changing how they do their security settings. But we now, anybody who signs up can write an article. It can't be published. So we prevent, that, that blocks people from spammers signing up and writing bad things that would show up on the site. But anybody can sign up and write an article. So, and again, with people mentioning things, so the marketing, if you write an article, feel free to send it out on the mailing list and say, hey, can somebody look at this? Can somebody do it? I know it hasn't been sometimes lately the best response, but it's really, we have three roles of users. We have authors, or we have four. Subscribers, anybody who wants to make an account and just look on the site for read stuff or comment. We have authors, which is the default account for anybody who wants to write. We have editors, and those are the people that should be going through and looking at articles, proofreading them, and helping mentor that person to kind of publish them or work on critiquing the article. It really shouldn't be go change it. It should be work with that person to kind of learn how to write an article better. And then, and that person will then move up then as well. So it's almost like a ranking system. And then the final one is admin, which is just the same as editor, but you can install plugins and change site settings. So it's really, the two are really not, there's only needs to be a few admins on it. So, uh huh? You should be able to install plugins. Yeah, so I've, I've, mm -hmm. I set the default level for admin, so everybody's an admin on the staging site. Mm -hmm. um, just because, like I said, if it blows up, I just revert the snapshot and it's back to normal. So the only thing that's not different about it is it doesn't always, It's it, I have to do a manual sync for it to pull in all the updates. So if you go to staging, it may be like a, <coughs> a few weeks behind from what you see, but it's still functional to test updates and so forth. But everybody who's an editor, that's one of the things on the wiki is that you should go through review comments because there's a, a bot that will scan the comments to make sure they're not spam. But we all know computers can't do everything correctly. So a few do get through and a few are normal people who do need their comments actually approved. So the authors, or the editor's job should be reviewing articles for spell check, translations, and also reviewing comments because it is crucial if we don't approve comments and somebody's legitimately asking a question that looks bad too because now I've written a comment but my comments never shown up now 
So the other thing, actually, before I go into questions, is one thing I've seen with posts is if you write an article and somebody comments on your thread or your post, do not, please do not just abandon it. Because a lot of times those questions are people actually asking for things. So yeah, they'll be like, okay, it's a good article. But a lot of people are asking questions. And if you just abandon the article, that really looks bad on us because somebody's coming to you and asking for help or a question on your article and you're just basically ignoring them. So it's always good to double check your article, especially if it's a really popular one, just to go back maybe every once a, once a week or so and just check it. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the, yeah. the comments. Do you think it would be possible to like let people publish the comments immediately without any approval? Because they mm. yeah. 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 Plus the other thing too is if somebody really has a grudge or something and they come in and yeah, so I, it's easier just to kind of let the bots catch it and, and go through and there's and make it sound like there are mean people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> never, Paul, never. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you get any DDoS attacks because I, we are maintaining federal.cz and we get like at least two DDoS attacks a month. So the, that goes back to the technical side. This, the site is has a, a, a firewall role for sim packing and, and dropping. So if it, with using what is it, Apache's load balancer test program, we've hammered it multiple times, and it's never dropped the never dropped the connection. So the firewall rules are set up to block any type of DDoS attacks. So it, I, I now I say that, and somebody probably will do it in here, but it's not guaranteed. <laughs> But it has survived the Apache's load balancer test, so which should simulate a DDoS attack. The easy question: Is there any plan to have a uh, archive or something like that instead of just older, 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 older? Because I don't see the way to just easily go to the site and say, "I'd like to find an article that I remember from like June of last year." So I, I brought that actually to go back. Let's look at the old one. I brought it up when Ryan was designing the theme. And I mentioned to him about, we, we took these away. And I actually personally like these ideas because we can kind of see, ah, the man of the. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was impressive. Yeah. See, yeah. Allison yeah. Hannigan. Uh, Allison yeah. Hannigan. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I, when we were designing the theme, that's the one thing that from this right here is I, I really do being able to miss, like being able to filter. I mean, definitely we don't really need like Thor News the kind of repetitious there, but it would be nice to have a way, a search box or a way to find something. Um, like especially like this one, events was really nice because any events we would do, we just click right there and you could see um, FUDCONs, um, flock videos, everything. And so, um, I, I, Ryan? <laughs> so, and, yeah, and when you click on it, it would be all old news. Okay. So the amount of people, like, the only sort of incoming stuff, the old stuff, is through Google Links, as opposed to, and that's why we went the idea of having the, the related content on okay. the side. But in our case, it's a different thing as the categories. Yeah. So okay. is it? My question is more, more years and then monthly these stories. Yeah. That's. Yeah. And I've also just there are some plugins for it for WordPress in the uh, so yeah, but what uh, uh, that's not matter what is what my problem is. is my question. So let's say I vaguely remember that we talked about something in May. Yeah. And I want to find that in searches and make me happy. Most sites have a way to go look at all this look at all the posts in May. We we don't have an archive but anywhere. I don't know if this is just a. I just went scrolling back through the older posts. I got three pages back and there's no older one. Yeah, I don't know if this is a problem with the, uh, with the, with the image because it looks like somebody used a really big image here. It might be obscuring the button here. But yeah, and 
then I turn on these ones, these little sidebars, and that really destroys the theme. So we can't even use like the widgets, I think, with the theme. Yeah. So we had so so these widgets right here, yeah. you can add these and kind of have like a calendar, like on some WordPress sites it will show the days and then how many posts. But if we add that to the current theme, it really yeah. goes yeah. back to looking right. Yeah, yeah, it looked, it looked like this one, yeah. Yeah, but also, yeah, I'm also, like, I, to be honest, I've, I've never thought in my head on any site that I've been on, I saw this in May. And, and for me, it's like I saw this kind of frightening people do that. That's why Joe asked me. Uh, if I'm a writer and I want to uh, um, make a quote from, from something, I remember this story. That's why I, why I he, But if you're a writer, you have access to the dashboard and it's all in there. No, no you, you think writer different right now. I mean, when writer outside. Okay. I mean, a journalist or something like that. Who wants to quote from, from that article? Why did you search for the topic? Why did you think, oh, well, May 2015, I did May 2015. You know, he made May 2015. Yeah, you did one yeah. article that you know different. It's not ideas. just you're looking for May, you might look also for the title. Right. Uh, but you do it in an archive. Right. No? So that's, that's the point. Do you have a there, search there, right now? There I don't think so. There is a search yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's oh, 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 yeah. Well, also in every article on every the outside. Is the search right. too, so. there, I, I will grant you that most people may not do it that way, but there are times when I have a point to go back and just say, like, I'm doing a presentation to a flock. I'd like to see what we'll be talking about this time it isn't a specific topic. Yeah. It's a, what was going on in four or two years ago, or, you know, that kind of thing. I'll grant you it's not everybody, but it, it is something that so can verify it. Well, I mean, you can, can verify that we press. do have older posts. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, for me, it's like, it's where do we put it and what the value is to the majority of that users? What we're looking at, I just wanted to show, so remember that picture I took of 3,000, just to show you guys how much in a day happens, we're already up to 5,800, so. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I tell people too is I encourage people to write for the magazine because you, a lot of times somebody will want to get, it's a good way to get seen, as you can see. So, um, I mean, a lot of, I know sometimes one of the blockers is people are kind of afraid because of how much traffic the site gets. So they're like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to get on this thing of having a repeat article. I just want to do a one-time thing. That's fine, but like I said, it's definitely a good way to kind of, like, ma like get in a series of something. I used to do the, the badges, and it's 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 a good way just to just to contribute too. It's a very easy method of co contribution. It's a very we're very streamlined in. So, so our site, like this, if you go to the front page, you go to the bottom, we get, we do have another post, but all the way keep going back and going back to the back. Is there, is there a WordPress report? Also, you have to remember the WordPress, but you can go to the WordPress site. Also, just in a, in a, in a fit of complete, like, I don't know, autonomy or or I don't know what it was, but I, I, I accept the Bernie's mental patch so we can't have a little thing inside that says you can submit to the story. Nice. So, uh, it just so, so it's in the and it's also, if you go to the article, you'll see it on the small side. So look at this, we're doing. Instead of talking, we're doing. Nice. Well, I don't know if, you, if, if everybody will love it, but the great thing is, yeah, we can remove it if somebody doesn't like it. We put it in there and see what's going to happen. Is there a logistic chair? I think we have like eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes.
Okay. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we've got uh, another instance, just like the WordPress yeah. Fedora magazine. So we define this for what is I mean, such a statistic as I said, why is it not interesting for a user what we do? I mean, the statistics shows that we have been more Well, if I go to a restaurant, I don't you, you are not impressed, but you are just one person. Right? Yes, but you're presenting all persons. There, there is enough contributor focused content that it does need a separate There's too much of it. I mean, contributor, so co yeah. We need it, definitely. No. We need to filter it somehow so people do get stuck. I'm agree with that we need to filter that. I agree with that, but I, I'm saying that such a statistic is not interesting for me. Yes, why not? No. No. So, then time. You know, I mean, some users, they just this is like, I don't get involved in <laughs> 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 Are we pushing this? This is DevOps. We can we no longer have things that are... As long as we don't shut down Apache, we're good. See, it's, for me, it's the... It's the, the, thing that I, that. the way we were discussing about that was that Matt's five things in Fedora would be the like it's basically then that's the the almost the summary of what's going on. Like it, this is what's happening in the community. Like right. if we're not the saying there's none of this. To pull you yeah. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> more <laughs> See, but the problem is like the, my prime example is the the recent election interview posts. There was fifteen of them, and each post was an interview with a Fesco or a, I forget what it was a working group. And that was done poorly. Yeah, I know, but we've done it in the past as well. But then it's even like the majority of people that, in my perception, that read the magazine so I can't even vote, let alone in that case. Well, I'm designing I've been a contributor for over 10 years. I don't care about Pesco. It has nothing to do with what I do. And Pesco is not. Okay, so here's a quote maybe many of you have heard. If you have data, Let's look at the data. If all we have is opinions, what's going on? No, that's what the data so says. <laughs> no, the data content. says the data says most people don't come to the magazine and go, what am I going to read today? They come in through Twitter, they come in through other avenues. They're not coming in and browsing and going, there's too much contributor focus stuff. How can I find it? No, they're just not stuff? clicking on the contributor stuff. Yeah, that's they're clicking on the user stuff. That's right. what they're going through social media and other stuff. So there's nothing to argue that contributor focused stuff arms the magazine in any way. Yeah. And everything else in this entire presentation has argued that we barely have the resources to maintain one publication. So splitting into two publications is ludicrous. But the problem is that we have too much contributor content that's not curated. That's the problem. There is no filter. If we don't have enough resources this is contributed content by people who come to us and say, this is what I want to write. We're not, we don't have resources where I go, hey, Mo, I want you to go write about Festo. You write about whatever makes you happy. Because none of us are paid to write for the magazine we do it in our spare time. So nobody's saying, like, I want Ryan to start this focusing on something else. I'm saying when someone rolls up and says, I want to write an article about something, we don't turn them away because it's not user focused. That is that is what I am saying. I, I almost feel like with the and again I don't need to harp on my idea, but I was I still almost feel like having that man a managing a tour with where we schedule things would kind of let us maybe fix this for everyone where you know we can be sure that there is a steady stream of like, you know, 80 or 90 percent user focused stuff. And when someone comes along with a you know, contributor from the story, it doesn't do what the you know, Festo is doing. I mean, you know, the Festo part is really just kind of overwhelmed the front page of all the community. Yeah, and, and I, I, I would agree with, I would agree with that. You know, when somebody rolled up and said, 
we're just at about 20 interviews that we definitely could have been, you know, why we don't want to discourage you, we need to have a more manageable format for this. Well, what, you know, what's ironic about it is that we want to destroy our community just to be a mess, but it's like we had, I think, like 20 articles or pitches that are sitting around in the queue. So, you know, if the, the, you know, we, we definitely, I, I still feel very much that I like the idea of a user focused, the user focused magazine, because I feel like the more it means is that it's legal and tired of too much for its own health. And where we have done a particularly crappy job for many years, and been focusing on users, this is one of the things that we would really are doing in the world with the magazine. And so I wouldn't want that to be good value, but at the same time, it's like, if, if people who want to contribute to the magazine really, really feel strongly about having some contributor focus there, maybe we can figure out a way to work. But I, I don't think that we can unless we start doing like regular, like ha ha having a regular drumbeat of managing the magazine as opposed to like whenever Ryan gets time, he's trying to get it and get it on it. Well, we can't yeah, do that. Doesn't that argue that if we don't yeah. have enough resources to have that regular cadence just for mm -hmm. what we have now? Well, I don't think that's what it's going to be. Just letting whatever people's yeah. meandering well, thoughts. That's what I'm worried about. Is that's like, where you have content. A mess. Content is great, right, yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you just sort of let anything in, it's going to delete the good content. Like, I would rather have one or one every two weeks that's a really good user focused article because it, like, then just uh, I'm not arguing for contributor focus. But Chris, can you stack yeah. another domain mm -hmm. on top uh, of the same WordPress instance and say it's going through this queue and this article is going to go a magazine this article? You can do multi multi theme or multi multi site WordPress sites. Because okay. that's what in my head that's a thing. Like even if it, I don't care about the back end, but like they're going to be close together. Like it, it's going to it's not going to be two different You're going to go through the same experience with the same workflow, um, but well at the end, you say publish to the developer site and or publish to the, or the contributor facing site or the user facing site. And I think what Joe's concerned about is that if you segment it out too much, then you're going to have to have all of the things that you found you need to publish content. You're going to need an editor or review board. You're going to need a QA review process. You're going to need a content feed, and you're going to have to come up with ideas and themes and all of these things for the contributor stuff and for the user stuff. And there's just enough people engaged in it. So, which one's the last See, first of my in my thought, the contributor stuff. The contributor stuff. I just want to do Keep one thing in mind, it's what Chris said. Chris said, it's now Fedora Magazine has a stage. If it is not in Magazine, it that didn't, isn't official. And please stop thinking in readers' numbers. If I publish an article which is uh, uh, read by Michael Laurable and he posted to Foronix, it's one reader maybe in this article, but it was the right reader and he made a story out of it. We, we have definitely also a win situation as we have published one article with, with how many readers. You know? uh, it's, it's not so easy to say that's a user content article. That's what I learned from my personal blog. I did not think, I never thought I will have that much traffic on that topic because that doesn't interest the people. I, I had uh, traffic on, 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 on my blog on audio. It was totally but interestingly, Michael picked that up from Jim. He's done that for me a few times. So uh, he picked up my contributor thing from the page. Yeah, well, no, no, sure. Like, I'm not saying he's, it's exclusive. He's exclusive. But I'm yeah. saying he can't pick up those. So, but you know, at the same time, I, I'm not trying to write. I'm not trying to write the fence here. I, but I'm, I really. But for I'm really proud of the fact that the magazine has really focused on something and being a project that is notoriously as bad as we are about focusing on something, identifying an audience, and serving that audience. Mm -hmm. 
finally starting to make some roads there on the technical side. This that felt like something that we were doing well on the marketing side of the magazine as well. Now we hate to lose that, I guess. That's that's kind of hard for a Because we've been you know, we've we I think we kind of I think we delude ourselves as to how much most people care about the country. So which is not to say that we should stop that we should stop uh, that we should stop pursuing that, but it's about finding the right place to do it. Because one kind of thing, magazine is like so, it's so, ca it's such a passive, uh, it's such a passive um, activity that we, that's, that's kind of popular, like, just and words, I guess. Like, yeah. I'm giving that to the, well, there's one difference, it's like, it's like, if he yeah. picks it up from the planet, he picks up your personal opinion. If he picks up in the Fedora magazine, mm -hmm. It picks up the uh, official opinion of Fedora. That's something different. No? So we should also keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. So I here's for what it's worth. Across all of our projects, every place where we communicate outwardly, we like really depend on the design team to like, help to put the veneer and the polish on the stuff that we do. And it, there is a difference. It's, it's wild to sit between the, the design to interact with folks a lot because it's, we have this, like, we don't want to devalue people's contributions. Right? We don't want to say, this contribution is not valid and we want, we're going to exclude you. But there is a real curation need. Like, there needs to be a, a high standard Keeping the content standard really high is important. And I like really trust the design team to keep the standard high and folks that are doing a good job with it. So like, I think that having the place where we can throw as much sausage making as we need to about how the project works, like we need that channel and then to curate from that channel into the magazine, rather than using the magazine as the curation cue. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the original line. Sits between each of the teams and has to facilitate. In an operational 
times like I see where the blocker comes and it's like the design team is desperately trying to keep the backlog down because like there's very few people in design that can handle like, all of the everything from t-shirts to UX. And like we're in the same position with storytelling too, where everybody is responsible for storytelling for their own side of the project. So like building this capacity where we're we're creating a huge queue of tasks, but that just means more work. It's like exciting because we're like here's all these stories that can be published, but that also means like here's all this editing and here's all this other stuff and it's work too. So like we really we just need to build capacity. There are people who are interested in doing this kind of stuff and there are a lot of people who know how these get done. It's just like most of the time the stuff that that we're from a meta standpoint kind of relatively new, so bear with me if this is like off base. But it's like everybody's protecting their plate. They're like, I really can't take anything else out of the plate. And we need to have people who aren't peripherally involved in these kind of activities, like storytelling, and marketing, and community. We need people whose main focus is doing this. And that's, I think, going to help with this so that when you're talking, when the, the blocker isn't, we have. It's a great problem if we have like, too many stories or too many ideas. It's a great problem. But, like, the, we need to build capacity for that. Like, I don't think anybody is saying, like, you know, this is. We don't want, like, bakers talking about how to be butchers, etc. Like, there's, there's a certain amount of, like, this is your wheelhouse, you know what you're talking about. Like, we've, got, we've got that on both sides. We just need to have people who can take direction from both. Neither side is like too too strapped to produce content or to polish it or to publish it. There's got to be more capacity to I think a lot of the stuff that we hung up on will like start to ease. It will be a lot easier to create flows between the parts of the product. This is so. What do you think? What do you think is the next step? So I'm doing my best here to get this com ops thing to what I'm going to give a lightning talk on in about an hour. And the idea is, is like, um, Toyota has this metaphor that you use that has been walking about a little bit called water spiders. And they are folks who are like, in, a, in an assembly line or any other production process, they're folks whose job it is is to sit between the processes to be able to anticipate where, where the needs are. So if this station is about to run out of resources, they can run between them. That's like a horrible simplification. But... The idea is, is that go between really like ninjas, like, 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 like Jeremy Katz used to be a ninja. Like he would just like hop in different, like, oh, Cody needs this thing, he would go to Cody the Witch, and he'd fly over, like, oh, who's in Jerry Sackhoff? He writes the script. Mm -hmm. right. So, like, Infra Team right now has a few ninjas. Like, Bean is a ninja. Like, he's a toolsmith who he sees problems, so we're a tool. We don't have we don't have ninjas that are working on things that aren't necessarily building code. But we're still figuring that out. Because everybody has to do community building, we don't have a community team because everybody is part of the community and everybody does that. So I've taken a list of stuff from the job descriptions, the stuff from OSS, discussions from the council, come up with a list of like eight different categories of things that operations ninjas would be interested in have people self-identify as those, and then just say, here's your relief picture for each of the teams. So like, if the design team needs to go between person, like, you are going to be almost like an intern, or almost like a, just someone who's there to provide extra capacity, but your main side, you might identify mainly with a particular side, but you self-identify with stuff that you're interested in. And we have like Join SIG and the ambassadors and a bunch of other folk who are about onboarding contributors, but it's mostly on the ground out of job missions. So it's like an older model of logs and meetups, which is a little different than some of the online and virtual wrangling and storytelling that comes now in the age of like social media and stuff. So for me at least, I think that we've got some issue areas identified. We've got some toolboxes. We've got some tools in the box that we can point to to say these are the types of things that we can work on. And we can point to the magazines as well. Point to these curated lists of content as possible to us. We can get people who are floaters, people who can go between issues. We need to build that capacity. We need people who understand 
many of the disciplines in many of the parts of the world. So that so may take some time. Well, so so can, I guess without you know without having to like get too far into how how that solves any you know each and every specific problem that we have seen or run into. I'm still trying to I guess I'm trying to understand how how that applies to the issue that we've got here. Like you know ideally when we open doors and Joe doesn't walk out of here feeling side you know why does it feel like the magazine's focus is going to drift or or that for me. Like how can we how can we find a common ground here that that people will feel like their contributions are welcome to the magazine and how is that idea for, for me, this conversation is almost too abstract. Yeah, that's it's what I'm saying. It's too distant from, from actual topics that we yeah, end up right. writing about for us to say. But we've got so people in this room that are just trying to figure out, like, how do we walk out of here to understand that we're all at the same time? I don't even understand what we're arguing about, to be honest. I really don't. Like, I'm not saying I think what I'm saying either. No contributor content ever. Right. It's just that, wow, we can focus on users and wow, I don't mean any disrespect to you, okay? I really don't. I feel like there's a very strong take your contributor content and go away. That's a trend. Yes, I, I don't know. All, I can only speak for myself. I, I feel like the contributor content that we would want in the magazine is, you know, of of a note like like Matthew's five, you know, five things and four. So something that is something that is, something that is curated before it gets before it hits. Like, I, okay, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me throw out some specific pitches. So we'll pretend I'm um, uh, you know, giving, giving a managing editor an yeah. actual pitch. I don't want to roll up and you weren't at the end of the day and take a call or yeah. like or something. Um, Chris referenced like when people were doing the, uh, you know, just we, we had a meeting, just posting that stuff on the magazine, yeah. and we were all, I think, in agreement on that. So I was like, well, um, how do we say this sucks for guys? Um, and, you know, what I'm saying is like, uh, Atomic, I want to post occasionally a thing about this is how you can build Atomic and, you know, give us a patch, as an example. Or this is how you would, you know, do something with a tuner or a test cloud or something for a cloud flight. So you know, this is where we're going with cloud and we need you to, like, need your ideas and help and things like that. I don't want to post raw logs or anything. I don't want to just roll up with a, like, really super obscure, like, okay, if you are if you're doing ARM development and you would like to weld an NVIDIA card onto it, actually, that might be kind of fun to that um, <laughs> If you're doing something really, really, like, a corner case, it would not be of interest to anyone except five people. I'm not arguing with that. You should necessarily go into the magazine. I don't want to draw off because this is off the planet. You know, they don't have a they don't have a need, they kinda of sort of you know, I want stuff that still works yeah, like so the, sort of. those kinds of articles like yes. Like for me, you said yes. like if the guy using like, like mm -hmm. I want to read that article. Yeah. And for me that would be of interest to users as well. Because they're cloud. Well, 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 that's that's a, specific it's too it's it's the yes, 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 specific yes, stuff. Yes. Like, how, how about this? Boy, for instance, Alpha just released. QA is going to need a lot of help over the next month or so. I think the QA articles are great. Here's what happened in QA. Here's what QA is doing. It's, it's yeah. People yeah. like to hear about the next thing. They get excited about yeah. the next thing. But then they don't want to know the details, really, but they want to know that it's happening. I don't, I don't know if we want, I, like, for instance, we say, hey, we've got this many blockers, right? Um, not necessarily invite everyone to the blocker meetings because then they would avoid foot or See, no, you can just do and and say, here's kind of guess what users here's how we make it. here's how we put the three pieces together here's how we make sure that you did it all the so time there is room yeah. for a pitch there should be a review process you shouldn't just churn things out but there should be room for a pitch yeah see and that's what I'm, I'm almost all of these pitches you can 
if it impacts the, like if you can spin it so it, it's like telling the user how how this, and not going into too much detail, but yeah. like that kind of stuff is, is good. Like users care about that as well, but it's, it's not a, sharing it's the giant list of who's speaking to a user, you're not speaking to a contributor. Exactly. It's about contributor stuff, but yeah. you're speaking to someone who's a user. Hey, you're a user, you're interested in I think right now they have all the same position of that. So, what is an example of something? I guess, and the other thing is that really don't know the, the council blog is fine, but they don't really. I see a new need for a contributor or a specific magazine on the blog. Give me an example of something that you don't want to see that seems plausible to somebody with that. So, like the, the semi recent ones like the Heroes of Fedora QA. Okay. Like bunches of stats. Yeah. People like that stuff. But but yeah, the first, like, here's, here's, here's what like, I'm saying. I'm not saying you don't. Yeah. I'm saying, like, stuff about Fedora and general yeah. politics and governance. Yeah. The users aren't going to care about that. Or thing. even or most, most, that stuff, most stuff. stuff on the hubs. Like, that's not something we really want to, like, the. Yeah, because it doesn't benefit users. It doesn't it's not, not benefit users, users, users yet. Like, it will, like, but, but that's the kind of, like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm I working on this. This is. If I told it to a user, this is the system it's not an interesting story to read all of the interviews, it's but it might be an interesting story to read about how the elections process works in the best of the world. It's, it's funny, like getting the specifics is kind of like making us realize that there actually is, we actually have like a good consensus of the communities. Like that atomic idea, I thought that was awesome. Um, I think things that are talking about mechanisms and processes inside the project that people have no context for don't make any sense or don't make any sense yeah. unless maybe in the context of for example an interview with somebody who is a contributor to say, hey here's what I do on the Florida team, here's the kind of things I'm holding. And in order to show somebody what the value of getting involved in Florida is. And that's that what that possibly like if it's if it's in the form of an interview that any lay person can Right, the atomic thing. Well, lay person in this case, like somebody who's not in the atomic developer, but somebody who's like, I've heard of this atomic thing, and there's, I don't know what I can do with it, or you know how, you know how it benefits me. So I read something about like, oh, here's where you download, here's what you can do with it, and by the way, you can use it for you know, this this kind of use case, or this kind of use case on your server host. And, uh, now, by the way, if you want to do a problem, here's what you can do with it. And so that's like the that's articles exactly that right. you, you propose are the reason why I feel there needs to be a separate blog because writing an article like that or even helping someone write an article to that to the standard where it, it's useful for the magazine it takes a lot of work. Like it takes a lot of work. And the idea with the contribute the, the community blog was that if someone wants to write up like a like it, it's less formal. Heroes of QA. Yeah, yeah that, that that there's stuff. not let out raising the bar. Yes, so it's, far it's they, like they can't. It's like it. sure, there's going to be curation and making sure they're not saying something crazy before it gets posted. But it's that it's not like you can say, oh yeah, go to Bodhi and do this, and you don't have to explain what Bodhi is. Like right, that's the because that's where the audience like. It's, yeah, I don't want. Yeah, if well, someone goes to the magazine. And yeah. That's making a good standard. Yeah. And so if someone reads it and goes, well, that's nice. yeah, fast and like, because I try to explain that stuff if I introduce it in my, in my articles, but it's like, if we have a, something that's, our audience is contributors, we can name drop this stuff and then we can we make the assumption that we know what they know what it is. Yeah, but if you, you have a
So no articles See. on dependency checking. I, I guess, I guess I don't find that I don't find that detrimental because I mean so many of us still occasionally pick up a newspaper and I feel you know completely empowered to read through the newspaper and dump the sports page into the trash. Um, I I don't necessarily feel like I need to know the you know all the jargon in the financial section. HDMI? 
Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Are we supposed to stop a recording or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bye, guys.